So the iPhone 11 is one of the more interesting iPhones that Apple has ever made. In my opinion, I genuinely do think that for the whole entire duration of basically the whole entire iPhone lineup, there's never been quite an iPhone like the iPhone 11. This has been an iPhone that stood the test of time for so many years. And I still think from this specific point onwards, I look at a device like the iPhone 11 as probably being one of the most important iPhones, mostly because it pretty much matched internally as the iPhone 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. So the Pro and Pro Max iPhones of those years, Apple pretty much, you know, kind of copied, which was amazing. However, the biggest thing here is to kind of talk about what's wrong with the iPhone 11 in this particular year. And to be honest, I don't think there's a lot of things that are wrong with this iPhone. There's a few things that kind of keep, that kind of like, kind of like keep me up at night to kind of be honest. The biggest thing here is that I was 17 and probably the hardware of this particular phone. So in a way with the hardware, let's just start up there. A lot of ways it does match the iPhone 15. So, you know, you have the glass on the front and the back, dual camera setup, 6.1 inch display, there's a lot of stuff that is actually overlapping and kind of even between both these devices. However, there is a big difference here. That IPS panel, if I'm being honest, is kind of aging this particular phone. And that is probably the biggest problem here. If you're getting a device like the iPhone 11, you're getting an iPhone that pretty much has somewhat of an outdated screen. And this can cause lots of issues and lots of problems for people who are wanting some sort of a newer device. You have to look at the iPhone 15 as an example. This is a baseline iPhone that does not have ProMotion, and it doesn't even have as good of a panel as the 15 Pro, but the iPhone 11's panel isn't nearly as good as that at like 750p compared to 1080p and an IPS panel versus OLED. That is probably one of the biggest things that's holding this particular iPhone back, to be honest. But the other thing here is with iOS 17. Because we're now matching like hardware and software, like there's a hardware and software issue, although I love the iPhone 11, the biggest problem here is that the iPhone 12 was pretty much the cutoff point for a vast majority of features within iOS 17. So to give you, you know, kind of example, the iPhone 12 to iPhone 15, pretty big, you know, jump in terms of an upgrade, but internally in terms of software, the iPhone 12 has almost like 95% of features that the iPhone 15 has in terms of iOS 17 update features. The iPhone 11, on the other hand, because the 12 was the cutoff point, you're pretty much missing out on like 70, you're missing out on like 30% of features there. You're missing out on FaceTime gestures, some newer type of capability here and there, and also like keyboard dictation, like updates, like so many random weird things that Apple probably shouldn't even cut off. They pretty much did here, which is kind of a little bit of a turn off for something like the iPhone 11 as well. So that is another like kind of minor thing to keep in mind, not the biggest deal in the world, but just another thing. Overall though, I will tell you, the iPhone 11 is a very solid iPhone. I like this iPhone a lot. It's not perfect, but I do think for the most part, Apple did a good job with it, and I still think it's completely worth buying. But if I had to kind of say some things that were wrong with it, that's probably what I would say. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.